welcome fans of flip clocks today we're looking at a Castellon model 701 that i rescued off of ebay you can see it's got some marring on the case on the top and on the bottom the seller indicated that the clock was for parts for restoration so we're going to take a look at this and see what we can do with it so here we have it in flip clock fan studios i'm going to get a clock for the first time i just kind of give it a little once over kind of get a feel for what might be wrong with it i've already had it plugged in and i know that the there's a light that comes on a little bit and but the wheel the indicator on the left there does not turn so we'll go ahead and get into it on this clock i would recommend you just go ahead and take these two screws out first you'll see why here in a moment so after that We'll just take these two knobs off. That's all we have to do. We've got a band, a metal band here that's kind of moved, been pulled away. Usually these are harder to get off than that. And that was really simple. And we're looking at this. You can see a lot of dust underneath that larger wheel. And that's an indicator the clock hasn't been messed with, which is what I like to see. So after removing the knob for the alarm there, uh, the case just kind of falls away. There's tabs at the top that holds it in, but basically just fell away when I first open it up I'm looking for any loose pieces that might fall out tiles or anything like that now in this clock it's kind of interesting the the case on the back moves right away from the core uh, that back there pulls right away because the cord is uh, adhered right there the clock mechanism now the wheel spins but it stops really fast so there's a problem there but we'll plug it in so we're energized, but you can see there's no movement. Well, there it is. Start it right up. It's fixed. Now you stop it and you can see how you, you stop it and it, it bogs right back down. Well, it needs a little bit of lubrication and I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. So what I want you to see here is right there on the clock mechanism, there's a, there's a nut. Now that washer just dropped away, I've already taken that screw out. That nut on the clock mechanism, if you do this improperly, it's going to break loose and just makes it really hard to get the clock back together. So what I'm unscrewing here, I'm not pushing down on the screw real hard because that will pop that nut out. So as you start to unscrew, take the pressure off there. Don't, don't push real hard. Much easier to get the clock back together later. So we can see, motor's turning, nothing major out of order there. When we look at the neon glow bulb, you can see it's just faintly glowing there. So I want to replace that and I'm going to show you how I do it in this clock if you're interested. The clock is working, you can see it flipped over. And now I haven't lubricated that yet, but you can see as it's warmed up, it's uh, starting more easily now. I would bet this clock was in storage for a while. At some point, I'm going to have to wash this and maybe run a little bit of plastic posh on that to see if we can clean it up a little bit. Same thing here. I think plastic posh will take that right out. It's not very deep. That's a little deeper. No major problems here. And that's interesting because that looks like plastic. They're, the other ones I've worked on have been metal, that interior piece there. Let's just go ahead and take this off. And this is interesting it's two metal spring clips so you just have to get something with a point in it and you can bend that a little bit comes right out it's a lot easier getting these out than in and the first time you take it out it may not go as easy as that but i've done it more than once so just take your time and when we get this out you can feel it's plastic it looks fine sort of a cream color and the, the clock it looks fine in here we got a piece of glass you got to be careful with that but the color of this clock I thought was brown and then in different lights it's looks different it's more like a slate color dark slate and you see this glass here it's dirty so again it needs to be cleaned but it also shows me it hasn't been messed with so to get your bulb out this is pretty standard you just kind of move that back a little bit uncrimp it I'm gonna Give myself some working room here, get this loosened up. And you've got the outer tube and two 
inner tubes there so I'm just running a little pick around the tube there to try to free that from the bulb it's gotten stuck over the years once I do I'm able to slide that back without much problem now the two tubes here I'm going to need to move them back so what I'm going to try to do is replace the bulb as it stands uh, we're going to move everything back and see if I can't solder in a new bulb this way instead of cutting wires and stuff so what I'm going to use is uh, some bulbs from this company here. They're C2A. They're not exact replacement. You're going to find that it's real hard to find an exact bulb unless you get a vintage bulb. These tend to be a little smaller, but the light output is very fine. And it's what I've got. And I think it's going to work just fine. It, it does give the same lighting. You see the bulb is compared there. It's a... Uh, it's a little smaller, but it's going to fit just fine. Now, you could use the same resistor, but the company that I bought from includes the resistors. Every bulb's going to have a certain rating of resistor. Let's look at your specifications. These came with resistors, so I like that. What I'm doing is I'm trimming the leads here and imagining that's where I'm going to put my resistor. So I'm trim trimming the leads to match what I've got there. And here's my resistor. I'm going to do the same thing to the resistor is trim back the leads a little bit based on the needs and, and based on the light here. I want to try to do it right so I don't have to have too short of a bulb when I'm done or too long. What I've got over here is a jig I made. It's just something I use a lot. We've got the resistor in the bulb. The wires are lined up. And what you want to do is you want to heat the wires. You're heating the wires. You don't want to melt the solder on the wires you want to we want the solder the wires to kind of melt the solder into them and that's that's a better way to solder so i'm checking my measures i'm going to trim it up a little bit here on the resistor side now i'm going to go ahead and set up and desolder this bulb out of there and just apply a little heat and i'm pulling with my right hand and that that came right out And then we'll get things set up to do the resistor side. Now I'm trying, it's, it's a little bit tight. I'm having to push back this, uh, this tube that's covering it. It's a fiberglass impregnated uh, tube, impregnated with something. Anyway, once I get it kind of uh, secured, I pull it out. Now kind of curiously, it seemed like it left a hole inside there. They wrapped that wire around there, then soldered it. And I'm wondering if I might be able to stick it back in that hole. I've actually tried that on other, other clocks and I've never been able to do it. I don't know that it's the best way to do it, but it might be easier. You can see a little hole. We'll plus some heat. And it went right in. Now that probably will never happen again. And it seems to be firm. You, you don't blow on these. To, you let them cool naturally and then you see if you... So it's, yeah, it's holding it just fine. I'm going to get the other lead soldered. Just kind of line things up and... In the same way, you got to take some time to line it up. Again, you heat the wire on the, I do it on the back side there, kind of get it hot, heat, heated and let the solder kind of go into it. It's a better connection. So once you got that all done, I'm having to fish out the tubes I pushed back in there. There's a clear plastic tube and a fiberglass tube. The fiberglass one's black. Like I said, it's got some, it's impregnated with something, some kind of coating. It's really heat resistant. All of these are. They're, they're rated up to like 300 degrees Celsius, which is really hot. So everything just kind of slides back up. You didn't have to cut any wires. It takes a little extra time maybe, but it's neater, I think. I'm just going to secure it there on my jig so I can plug it in and show you that the light does work. You'll notice that motor kicked right on too. We're still going to lubricate that motor though. I want to show you how I'm going to lubricate it this time. Now you're going to find a lot of different suggestions on how to do that. And I'll, I'll admit I've gone back and forth on it. I've used alcohol to clean it out first. But with that uh, with that pattern, that, that tape that's on there, I really don't want to mess that up. And alcohol will do that sometimes. Now this, this isn't what I always use. This is a gun oil, but it's good for cleaning and lubricating. And that's what I want, a little bit of both. And I'm going to drop it in this hole. Imagining that it's going to drop on the back side too. Because it is. It's going to drop down there and hit that axle. 
got a lot of excess on the outside but once it's on that axle we're going to kind of spin it around and let that kind of work back in there I said some clocks you can use different there's different techniques and some clocks are dirtier or stickier than others and you may have to try others some people have said that WD-40 is bad I think WD-40 is actually a good way to clean it really good way and it'll it'll work for a while but you might want to put a drop of oil in there after that so here we are ready for a reassembly and I've you got to watch these these glass things you'll want to drop it in there we just don't want to crack that especially on on, on the camera here so be careful with that we drop down our front piece there and like I had mentioned earlier getting these tabs back in there is difficult I'm not going to show you how many times I struggle with it but I don't want to pretend that that it was easy for me I would imagine they had a little tool that made it really quick to put those in so after a while I get it lined up and then I have to put pressure on it to bend it so that it catches on the outside of that case again take your time don't get frustrated now I'm gonna get these washers back in here I've already got the other one in and you want to look down in there see if you can see that nut and we're letting gravity help us out here because that washer will slide around we we'll get that in there until I can see the hole line everything up and remember when we put this screw back in there do not put a lot of force down on it you'll pop that nut out and trust me you really don't want to do that if that's happened to you the nuts out you might want to secure the nut with a little bit of super glue or even hot glue just to hold it in place as you try to get it screwed in not the washer I'm talking about the the orange nut on the other side there so we slide the case back on here and in between all this I've uh, washed the case and I've actually run a little bit of uh, Meguiar's plastics polish on it I didn't try to take it back to a you know shiny gloss glow I want it it doesn't have to be that way on every clock and I, I could have made it shinier but I'm not gonna pretend that this is a new clock and it looks a lot better so we'll screw those screws in and apply our alarm button here get everything back in order our uh, this is our alarm uh, selector the sets so the alarm and this will be our time selector now again this is going on really easy and a lot of times you have to put a little pressure on there just take your time with that steady pressure but in this case it you went back together very well so I've tested the clock out uh, the lights coming on the clock works just fine so there it is we ended up getting a pretty good deal on this castle on 701 and we got it fixed up really nicely thanks for watching When you get the time, come visit us at flipclockfans.com.